The cutout tool allows for the removal of backgrounds or for isolating objects from images. Parts of images or layers with the cutout tool applied will become transparent, hence making content on the layers below it show true. You can then switch backgrounds or use isolated elements in other projects, such as photo montages, digital collages, and many more. Selected via the toolbar or by tapping K on your keyboard, all of its features are nicely allocated in one single menu for easy access. Before going further, let's take a look at mode with the options to either keep or remove. These are the core functions of the cutout tool. When active, keep is indicated by the color green and will retain or restore areas of an image that is selected or brushed over. Remove, indicated by the color red, will do the opposite and take away areas. With that concept in mind, we'll now explore the ways in which these functions can be put to use. The first method, Shape Cutout, provides a choice of six shapes to use for cutouts. Under Softness, you'll be able to choose how hard or soft edges on selections will be. To demonstrate, we'll select Keep and the star from the Shape menu. For Softness, we'll just go with None for now. With the crosshair as your guide, click and drag away from or towards the start point to control the size of the selection. Notice that the selection is green because the tool is now in keep mode. This will maintain areas within the selection and remove everything else outside of its bounds. Release the mouse button to apply. Now, only the selected area remains while the rest is removed. And since there's no underlying layer, we can see the checkered background behind it. This lets us know that the rest of the areas are transparent. Seeing as we went with none for the softness setting, the edges for the cutout will be sharp and defined, while the light and medium settings will result in softer edges. Generally, light will be our go-to setting as it has better balance and helps isolated objects or areas blend better. But ultimately, it is still according to your preference and requirements. The hint remove function will show a low opacity preview on parts of the image that have been removed. Extract as layer duplicates extractions and sets them up on a new layer of their own, and you'll be able to see it show up in the Layers panel. Invert Cutout reverses the initial selection of the cutout. Reset Cutout, pretty straightforward, removes all changes and returns the image to its original state. So a moment ago, we looked at the Keep mode and how it took away areas outside of its selection bounds. The Remove mode, now in red, would clear out everything inside. To bring it back again, click on Keep and select the same area. Simple, right? Here's a quick tip. With the primary mode selected, you can quickly switch to its alternate mode by holding down the Shift key on your keyboard. So if the Keep mode is selected, holding down Shift will switch to the Remove mode and vice versa. The next tool, Magic Cutout, selects pixels that are of the same color or tone. Based on the color that was clicked on, the Tolerance slider would control the amount of color or tonal variation to include into a selection. The higher the tolerance, the wider the range. For an example, we'll make a selection with a default tolerance value of 32. Clicking on a blue area would immediately select and remove other blue pixels that fall within the current range of tolerance. So if we increase the value and try again, that widens the range of blue and most of the background is now removed. Contiguous, turned on by default, would only select pixels of similar color and tone that are directly connected or touching each other. Due to this, if we clicked on the yellow on this pyramid, it would be the only one affected. However, when contiguous is turned off, similar yellow tones on the other shapes will also be selected. And of course, the tolerance option can help determine the range of selection here as well. With the draw cutout method, you can paint over areas to keep or remove with better precision and control. The brush preview window will give you an idea of how your brush looks as the size and softness settings are adjusted. A brush with a harder edge is good when dealing with details, while softer brushes will be more suited for general brushing, blending, and transitions. 
It's always good to select a brush size and softness that's relative to the area that's being brushed over or for what you are trying to achieve. The lasso cutout allows you to create free-form selections. It's great for uneven shaped objects that cannot be selected right away with the shape cutout. Simply click on the starting point, then drag along the shape of the object to trace it. We'll just do this roughly as an example. Release the mouse button only when you've returned to somewhere near the starting point to complete the selection. If the mouse button is released early, Pixlr will complete the selection automatically by joining the start and end points with a straight line. But don't worry if you can't get everything on your first run. Just go back and repeat the steps to add to the initial selection. Moving on, the AI cutout function is an automated feature that detects subjects in images and removes the background behind them. It's able to help cut down on editing time and works best with images that have well-defined subjects. Here's a nice example. We can see that there's good contrast between the subject and the background and the edges or outlines are clear. All we have to do now is just click on the AI cutout button and the tool will do the rest. Once the cutout is ready, the brush and lasso functions can then be used to fine-tune it further, where required. And that concludes our exploration of the cutout tool. At the end of the day, each cutout method will have their own respective features, and while some work fine on their own, they can be mixed and matched during the edit process. So feel free to experiment. We'll see you in the next video.